Hello, my name's Dave Ford and this is Logan the Whippet and once again we're out on a walk in the New Forest. Today we're at a little place called Milliford Bridge which is about two or three miles to the west of Lyndhurst in Hampshire. We'll be doing a circular walk starting and finishing at the Forestry Commission car park. So do join us. Are you ready? He's ready. Let's go. Action. Well, I just started the walk about 300 yards from the car park to the west. Although I will be doing an anti-clockwise route, I just wanted to show you something right at the beginning. The new forest is always coming up with surprises and we've got another one here. You can probably see just behind me what looks like a fireplace and that's exactly what it is. Let me turn the camera around to show you in full. It's uh, You could call it a memorial. Uh, it relates to um, or was put up, the for put up by the Forestry Commission and it recalls the First World War presence of Canadian and Portuguese workers who helped harvest the timber for wartime use in, uh, in the trenches. Uh, I think originally what happened, obviously when the First World War started all the local forestry workers were enlisted and were called up that they were needed to fight in Europe and that left nobody to cut down the trees and the forest. So in 1916 a number of Canadian troops came over and they were actually called the Canadian Timber Corps and they set up camp here and started working in the area and then a year later they were joined by some Portuguese troops and this fireplace here was taken from the Portuguese cookhouse. As like I said, it was quite a major operation around here. At one stage there were something like 200 Canadian troops and 100 Portuguese troops and 25 buildings, something like that. There was a plaque that used to be to the side of the uh, the fireplace which uh, gave the story but he's gone. So we're going to head back to the car park and there's a little bit more evidence over there that will show us where the sawmills used to be. Well as I mentioned when we were looking at the Portuguese fireplace memorial there was a huge sawmill or timber mill in this area during the First World War and indeed the Second World War. The only little bit of evidence that there is just behind me here, in fact this is where I did <laughs> we did the introduction from, there's a massive concrete block there and there's a, an even smaller one over there and indeed over the road there's um, clearly some foundations of some buildings but, uh, hopefully I'll be able to put a photograph up showing what the camp originally looked like we're now gonna head into the forest we're just coming to a gate which is going to take us into the home hill enclosure successfully managing to open and close a gate with a camera in one hand and a whip it in the other. Now this is a an old enclosure that was established in 1815 that in fact uh, took over an even older ancient forest that had been around since the 1600s and it was one of the many some would say unsuccessful attempts to uh, replenish wood needed for the Navy. If I turn around, or turn the camera around should I say, we've got this lovely gravel track 
and I'm surrounded. It's pretty much pine trees in general, although there are the odd, yeah, there's an oak tree over there and there's a beech tree, but uh, primarily pine. Oh, look, there's a deer. I wonder how close. Oh, can you see that? No, oh, gone. <laughs> oh, there's another one going over. And Logan's seen it. Luckily, he's on a lead. <laughs> it is a it is a super walk for dogs, but uh, I think I'll keep them on the lead just for a little bit longer. There's certainly a lot of squirrels in this forest. Obviously, grey squirrels. Uh, Sadly, the native red is no longer with us. I believe the grey squirrels came over from eastern United States in the 1870s, 1876. But they came to the forest here, the new forest, in the 1930s. And within a matter of years, the grey squirrel population had dominated and uh, the red squirrels disappeared. I think the problem was that the, the greys are a much bigger animal and they always won the fights for food. But I think the big problem was that the grey squirrels carried a, a virus called squirrel pox, which they could survive from, but it was fatal for red squirrels. Anyway, Logan's already seen a fair few squirrels, but it's a lovely walk. We're filming, uh, where are we, 4th of September in the morning. Sun's out, temperature's nice, but uh, there's that definite autumnal feel. Just noticed something I was just coming downhill on the track and noticed something on the left hand side which I want to show you this I'm pretty sure is the remains of the earthen bank that went around the old 1670 enclosure and it it goes back some way I suppose it's about a metre high and uh, so it goes all the way and then across the track on the other side it continues pretty much in a straight line through those trees but uh, so you wouldn't know it was here unless you were specifically looking for it now I've got to get back over this ditch if you see my arms suddenly jerk from side to side, it means a squirrel has been spotted. Well, as we've been going along this route, from time to time, we keep coming across this little stream called Highland Water. And I'll just turn it around so you can have a look. It's actually one of the, the prettiest little streams in the forest. Certainly it's one of the cleanest. The, the water is very clear. Uh, there's a gravel bottom and uh, it's really quite pretty but interesting enough as you go along it's quite noticeable that you have these they must be man-made gullies that feed into the stream from time to time because they are pretty well dead straight and I presume that must have something to do with going back to when it really was used as a a timber producing area but uh, oh what a what a pretty little place well a little bit of wildlife for you folks very small wildlife another ant's nest not quite as big as the one that we saw at Balderwood the other day but let me pan round there we go and get to, I don't know if you can see them beavering away. This is the 
third nest that I've seen in the last 300 yards or so along the side of this track. And these are what are known as southern wood ants. They're quite bigger than your normal ant that you might see at home. And they have this orangey black body with very large mandibles. They can get a bit aggressive. And an average nest could have something like half a million ants in them. That one's probably only about two foot high. Well, they're certainly crawling all around my feet, so I think we'll move on. Folks, as I always say, a walk in the new forest is never complete without some new forest ponies. And here's our quota for today's walk. A little foal on the right. I presume this must be mother and daughter, I guess. You are a cutie. I'm not going to get too close to them because I... I tend to prefer not to, because they are semi-feral, but uh, always a lovely, lovely sight and very peaceful. I love uh, her mane, it's uh, almost as if she's had a, a blonde tint put in. <laughs> you are a cutie. Ah, okay. oh, lovely. Even this time of year, they're struggling a bit with flies, which is such a shame. We've just come through a, a gate, still very much in the heart of the forest, but just to come across something that, well, if you didn't know what you were looking at, you could easily miss it. I'll just turn the, the camera around slowly. Just parallel to the, to the path is this, you could call it a gully, I suppose. It's bracken filled and there's sort of moss encrusted banks either side and there's a straight line it's about I don't know two meters wide and maybe a two meters deep in places and this is basically the route of the First World War narrow gauge railway that was associated with the uh, the sawmill back at the uh, the car park but uh, I say now pretty much overgrown I say, it's a, just a case of keeping your eyes open and it's surprising what little, little gems you can find just in the middle of a forest. Right, we're near the end of the walk, so we need to kick on. Action. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk at Millibook uh, Bridge, but we thought we'd uh, take a little drive two miles down the road. There's one more thing I wanted to show you in the area, just over my left shoulder is the Nightwood Oak, reputedly the oldest tree in the New Forest, roughly 500 years old. Let's have a look at her. A, a common oak, affectionately known as the Queen of the Forest. And as you can see, she's been pollarded. There are four or five branches that uh, make their way up. Pollarding, by the way, means um, they tend to cut the tree back at about two meters from ground level and that will then encourage a number of branches to grow out. Pollarding actually was made illegal in an Act of Parliament 1698, I think. Uh, apparently, uh, at the time, the government weren't keen on it. They were looking to keep oak trees with just a single trunk, as that made it better timber for the, the Royal Naval ships. But she's well protected there with a little bit of fencing around the side. A lovely sight. Uh, I just wanted to get that into the walk while we were here. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, 
and comment. <laughs> Thank you, Logan. And hopefully you'll be able to join us on another, another walk sometime in the future. In the meantime, thanks for watching and cheerio. There's lots of creepy crawlies on this log, aren't there? Yeah, I think we better leave. Mm -hmm.